We're going to look at how to create a responsive design set of comps using Adobe Artboards in Adobe Photoshop CC. I have created a set of wireframe comps based on the responsive design tutorial that we did two weeks ago. And as you can see here, here's the wireframe from the set of tutorials we did with grid design using a grid. And then I created a comp for tablet size using a 768 wide pixel breakpoint and then a wireframe for the mobile device size using a 320 pixel breakpoint. Now these are pretty common breakpoints and for the most part it's what people are still using for tablet and for smartphone. In the future those may change and some people use different breakpoints but for now as far as an exercise goes and learning how to create these this is what we're going to use. So again please don't think that this is the only way to do it and if you've heard of other people using different size breakpoints um, different people do different things so what I'm showing you is just an example and it is by no means the only way of doing this. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to basically create these same layouts here using our actual comp and not using wireframes. And so this will be easier for you to use or for to do since you already have a completed comp from what we did last week. So to start out with, the first thing that we need to do, we need to make sure of is that we have everything, every element in our design set using smart objects. And the reason for this is because if we create uh, smart objects, we're going to be able to then use those again in the artboards and then be able to edit those in a fashion that allows us to edit each artboard element a single time from a single object. Okay, so again, the first thing that we need to do is convert the objects, and this would be all the layers, convert all the layers to smart objects. So to start out with, you can see here I have some text, I have a logo, I have some other text over here, and then I have a, a white box here for a header. In order to convert them to smart objects, all we have to do is select the layer, and go up to layer, smart objects, convert to smart object. We can also combine um, layers together into a single smart object. If you want to do that, be careful because it kind of limits how you can move them around. So if you want to change the spacing, then you might not want to do that. But for example, if I wanted to keep the logo exactly the same, which I might not want to do for a mobile design, then I can link them together. And the way I would do that, I'm just going to kind of go ahead and undo what I did already when creating that original smart object here, is I can select both layers here and then go to layer, smart objects, convert to smart object, and it converts both of them to a smart object. Now, what's the smart object? The way smart objects work is if I double click on the layer, it's going to open up the file separately in a separate window as a separate document. And then I can edit the document from here, or I can edit the parts from here if there's two separate layers here. But now, see, the problem with this is if I want to move these around, if I want to move the, the um, layout, of uh, these two items here, it's going to be more difficult to do without seeing the rest of the, the design there. So it's up to you if you want to do it that way. As long as you know some things are going to be locked together, then that's fine. But if not, I would be careful merging things together like that. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that again. Back here. And then I'm going to make these individual. Just so, again, so I have more flexibility. So layer. Layer, smart object, convert to smart object. Same thing with the logo. I'm going to go to layer, smart object, convert to smart object. I'm going to do it with the text here. 
smart object, convert to smart object, and then with the, the vector box that I created there as well. Oops, I keep going to image. So convert to smart object. So now they're all smart objects. And I'm going to save you the time of going through and looking at me doing each of my parts into smart objects. I've already done that. So they're already here. You can see in all my sections here, they're all smart objects here. And then from there, we can go and then start creating the artboards. So artboards in Photoshop are basically a set of comps. So if you ever use comps in Photoshop, it's basically the same thing, but we can see them visually together. So the way we're going to um, create the first set of artboards is we're going to select all the layers that we want in the artboard. So I don't really need the grid in there, and I don't need the background in there. That The background is going to be part of, of every single part of my um, my layout here. So with all these selected, I'm just going to go up to layer here and select new artboard from layers. And I'm going to call this desktop. And I know it's a 1020 layout. And again, 1020 doesn't have to be the width that you use. It's the one that we did in the exercise because at least I use a grid from 960 grid system that was 1020 wide. Um, you can do it a different width if you feel it necessary. It doesn't matter. The same thing applies. It works the same. Now, one of the things that you'll see here is the width and height. So the width is 1020 pixels, and then the height is 1680, and that's just the height of it, how it is originally. So now you can see here that our folders are in a big folder here that's titled Desktop 1020. So these are the folders or the layers that are in this artboard now. So now we're going to create the next two artboards. So for the tablet size, we're going to create, like I said, a breakpoint of 768 pixels wide. And this time we do it a little differently. We go up to Layer and New Artboard. And we're going to title this one Tablet 768. And we're going to change the width here this time to 768. And we can adjust this later on. We can also adjust the height later on as well, which we will do. But if we click OK, we'll see here that now we get a new artboard right next to that. And it's blank because there's nothing in it right now. So there is a process for copying the other files in there, or the other layers, that I'm going to show you in a second here. Um, if we click on each one of these, we can see it'll select that particular artboard, and we can see them together. So now we're going to create the next one, which will be the, the mobile. So that's going to be 320, smartphone, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we need a new artboard. So this is mobile, oops, spelled it wrong. And this is going to be 320. And we're going to change the width here to 320. There are also some custom presets in here. I mean, some presets. It's custom right now, but you can choose different presets here. So there is a width for iPhone 5, iPhone 6, um, different sizes here. Um, again, depending on the breakpoint that you want to use. There's a whole bunch of different ones here, and they'll show you different widths here. So um, mobile design, like I said, this is the most prominent, but if you're looking at designing for Apple Retina or iPhone 6, you could have a breakpoint for either one. So it's all going to depend on who your audience is, and when you look at creating your, your goals, um, defining who that is, and that's going to determine your breakpoints from there. It's nothing that there's a particular formula for. You're, that's something that you're just going to have to do when you do research. Okay, so now that we've got those created, the next step is to populate each layout with the actual layers.